This video contains an ad for Bright Sellers. What's up guys, salut, this is Alex, welcome back to the Dry Pasta series. Dry Pasta is the unsung hero of the pasta world. We are so used to it that it has become a commodity. People even think fresh pasta is superior to dry pasta. Maron! This stops now. In this series, we're gonna learn everything we can about this fascinating Italian food. We're gonna start cooking dry pasta with respect. I like that. That's respect. And we're even gonna try and make some ourselves. I know, right? What a program. In the previous episode, I bought myself a heavy-duty pasta machine to extrude pasta. It worked a treat, but this incredible win was followed pretty much immediately by a terrible fail. I tried to dry the pasta I just made, but it was just a disaster. After four hours spent in the standard dehydrator, which I thought would be a great pasta dryer, by the way, uh, my pasta was cracked. The surface was uneven and all crazed, and the overall shape was warped. My, my, my destiny was bent, basically. It's a little analogy. Now you get to compare this to that. That is a commercially available pasta, a good one, obviously. Look how clean the shape is, how unwarped it is. The surface is even, nothing's crazed, nothing's cracked, because for this one, there's an enormous... Oh, you see. Ha. I mean, try to crack that one, good luck. This one, I just, you know, accidentally broke it. I'm standing miles away from this one. Ah. <laughs> now, in all honesty, I cannot say that I haven't been warned about this. You see, in episode 3 of this series, when I visited an Italian pasta factory, the master pasta maker there, Paolo Felicetti, told me a few things about pasta drying. Tu vuoi fare la pasta, la, la pasta, pasta secca, secca a casa sì. tua? Sì. Auguri. <laughs> <laughs> Siamo da temperature alte con umidità basse, che quindi sono delle zone essiccanti. Passiamo a delle zone con temperature più basse, però l'umidità più alta. E questa è una zona di riposo. It's funny to think that when I got my extruding machine, I thought I had cracked the pasta code, where in fact, compared to drying, extrusion is like a walk in the park. It's like a park with balloons, ice creams, kids playing. Drying, it's just a nightmare. And there is no YouTube tutorial like how to make dry pasta at home, the foolproof ultimate guide, none of that, okay? The only thing that I could get my hands on are heavy, dense, almost unreadable research paperwork. I went deep into these research papers and it finally made some sense. Who would have thought that drying pasta would be so complicated? <laughs> so why don't we start simple and make some dough? I'm wondering if that sound just creates a Pavlovian reaction. Does that ring a bell? Because it's blue fridge time. Okay, and now a quick ad from our sponsor, Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is an online wine club that offers hundreds of private label wines, so you'll be able to try a new wine you've never ever tasted before. After you take a quick seven question quiz, they match you with wine from all over the world, curated to your palate, not his palate, not her palate your palate. I took the quiz, I answered a few questions, and then I got offered a wide selection of wine. They look pretty tasty. Probably because they're just like curated to my palate. They look amazing. I've got this cactus spark, red plum, black cherry, black raspberry, vanilla, nice. I've got a rosé, I've got a dry white, ooh, avast, dreamlet, or oh, Riesling, yes. From California, that sounds amazing. The sweetness of this Riesling is beautifully balanced by bright acidity. Flavors of peach, pear, apricot shine alongside aromatic floral notes of honeysuckle and jasmine. Very nice. Oh yes, I like the Riesling. Anyways, the selection is amazing. These are definitely wines I've never tasted before and these are wines I would be willing to try. Yes, please. Bright sellers will gather your taste preferences and deliver a personalized and unique box directly to you. 
What I love is that each box comes with wine education cards for each bottle that outline, tasting notes, uh, suggested pairings, best serving temperatures, and origin. You can also read their blog, Glass Half Full, as another resource to improve your wine knowledge. Thank you to Brightellers for giving my followers a limited time offer of 50% off their first six bottle box. Click the link in the description to get started. Thank you Brightellers for sponsoring this video. So pasta dough is made out of semolina and water. Semolina has roughly a 15% water content. Water obviously has 100. So it gives us for pasta dough about 32% water content. Now drying pasta is basically lowering this water content all the way to 12.5%, which is the legal threshold, at least in Italy, to be called pasta. This ensures a stability over time. Yes, Italians have a law about water content in pasta. Let's have a look at how pasta actually dries. This is the cross section of a pasta. Spaghetti, for example. Using hot air, we can pull moisture out of pasta and turn it into steam. Then you discard that steam and you do it again until this is dry. The problem. With hot air, you can't dry the inner core. There is more moisture in the center than on the edge. So we have to wait till the water molecules migrate from the center to the edge. And once it becomes even, then start again. Every drying period has to be followed by a waiting period in order for the pasta to reach an equilibrium in terms of humidity. Then the whole process start again. Dry ancora dry. dry. As the pasta dries, the waiting periods get longer and longer. Basically, as the pasta goes drier, then it becomes harder and harder for these to move this way. So, so that's basically why drying diagrams for pasta are always a succession of heated ventilation followed by moments of rest. That is also why it's taking ages to dry pasta. I want to know if I can dry pasta properly with the tools that I have and the knowledge that I just gained. Off we go. I mean, look at these beautiful pasta that I just made. A soft, malleable pasta coming straight out of the extruder. This is the state called plastic. If you try to change the shape, the deformation will stay. But as this pasta dries and becomes more and more rigid, the state goes from plastic to elastic. Now, in this state, if you try to change the shape of pasta, it will try to go back to its original shape. A bit like a rubber band, basically. The problem is that with such a rigid structure, it can't accept much deformation. If drying is too intense, pasta will crack. Yes, this is a fascinating change in terms of structure. It's also fascinating to think that scientists have called plastic the soft one and elastic the rigid one. But, okay, I'm not pitching, I'm just saying. So this is an even closer look at the cross section of a pasta. Let's think of a string of spaghetti. The outer layer is drier, but there is more moisture on the inside. These big differences in humidity inside pasta create volume differences between the center and the edges. It's almost like the pasta is breathing more or less, expanding and contracting. And if the pasta is in its elastic state, it will just break it. This is a direct application of what I just said. Look at the enormous crack inside this rigatoni. It means that my drying process has to be gradual. So what do we do with our little rigatonis? Well, I've tried to create a diagram out of everything that I've learned and generic example that I have seen in research paper. I have spread the drying along four hours. There is a drying state and a resting state. Basically, over time, we move from long periods of drying and short periods of rest to short periods of drying and long periods of rest. This should work better than just leaving 
the dehydrator on all the time. The food dehydrator that I'm using is not a real pasta dryer. It's meant to dry fruits and beef jerky. It doesn't work with the diagram. So I have to manually pause and unpause the thing. That's four hours of me like this slaving. I'm bitching, but I'm happy to do it, to be honest. So I covered it with two-ply cardboard. It's basically the poor man's insulation. And the idea right here is basically to provide the machine with a more stable temperature over time, even when I turn the fan off, because the fan and the heater are connected in this. That's why this whole wacky contraption. Now, another problem is that this machine only displays the target temperature. I need to know the temperature and the humidity inside. So for this, I've just installed a very cheap uh, humidity sensor that also does uh, temperature. It's not perfect, but I think for the sake of this experience, it will do. We are hour one. This one is 25 minutes of heated and ventilated action. But also, I can't see what's happening inside, so it's just terrifying. I really hope this goes somewhere. I'm not doing this one more time, okay? Okay, so this was the final cycle. In theory, they should be properly dried. That's the theory, but I'm also slightly terrified. What if they have warped? What if they have cracked? What if they are... Co So stressful, I'm pressing harder and harder on it. I'm waiting for the pasta to crack. It's pretty solid! It's very solid. It's extremely solid. First of all, you need to excuse my extrusion process, which is far from being perfect. It's not as bad as the caterpillar I was producing a while back, but I haven't cracked the code yet. It is pretty uniform, to be honest. There are no darker spots. There are no cracks everywhere. It's very promising. All the pasta that I've been drying so far, I could crush them instantly. Now this one, I must have done something good, okay? Because you haven't seen everything that has happened off camera. This is how many pasta I've been drying. Let, let me just show you one. This was my caterpillar years, you know? Uh, these are just, this is just like dust. All right, so far from calling this whole experience a failure, I can't call it a real success. I know I've shown you like a good pasta, but unfortunately, not all the pasta that I've done behave the same. See, the, <laughs> you, see you see this one, for example, doesn't have any structure. And these pasta, some of them have cracked. Look at this pasta that I've dried with my smart diagram. Look at the smart crack inside. Uh, I genuinely don't understand what's happening here. I've been following science, you know, established by legit Italian pasta makers and scientists and university professors. So it can't be the science. And if it can't be the science, then someone is not doing his job properly. You and I need to have a little chat. On, off. That works. Just the time. One hour, two hour. That works nicely. Temperature. Let's set it up to 50. Oh, that is plenty hot. I can feel the heat. I can feel the... Hold on a second. Wait a minute. One second. Look, it doesn't even move. This should be flapping everywhere. This is possibly the lightest thing I could find. And it is barely moving. Meaning that there is no or almost none air movement inside. It sucks. 
I mean, there is some maybe happening very, very, very close to the fan, and that's probably where, like, the only right pasta was located, super close to that center fan. But the rest, it's static. Nothing's moving here. There is no ventilation in that machine. After claiming that ventilation is key when you're drying pasta, well, there is none. We stop this. This is madness. All right, so this is how I see things, okay? There are only two futures for me right here. Number one, I go out and buy a professional pasta dryer. However, pasta dryers are crazy expensive and they take some real estate that I cannot really afford in this studio. Or, number two, I simply fit a working fan in there. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? 